Bonjour tout le monde, I'm Diane, the American behind this channel and the We in France blog. The US presidential election is coming right up on November 3rd and today we're talking about what the French find strange about the American election process. Okay, so for this video I collaborated with my husband Tom, who's French, and he shared some of the things he finds a little bizarre about the American election process and also explained how things are done in France. And then I also talked with other French people I know who graciously gave me their input. So thank you everyone for helping me with this video. And it's just meant to be an overview, not a long comprehensive video with all the ins and outs of the election. So uh, know that I'm not covering everything here. And also, as always, please be respectful in the comments. I know politics and elections bring out a lot of emotions and I just ask that you remain respectful. Okay, so with that, let's get into it with number one. Okay, the first thing that might strike a French person looking on from afar uh, as bizarre is where are the less popular candidates? So when watching the US presidential election, um, once we get past the primaries, it's usually a, a two candidate election, right? Whereas in France, you'll see a larger selection of candidates. And why is that? Well, there are two reasons. Uh, the American election is not a two round election like it is in France. And I'm not talking about the primaries, basically, in France, the presidential election is organized into two rounds, and the way it works is in the first round, you vote for whoever, you, whoever you'd like, and if one candidate gets over 50% of the votes, the majority, in that first round, the election's over. That person wins. Done. No second round. But it's never happened in the history of French elections, so what happens is then the French go on to vote in round two. In the second round, only the two candidates who get the most recorded votes in that first round can participate. And basically this two round process allows smaller candidates to participate. And most importantly, it allows voters to choose them and have a chance at actually winning from the very first round. So you vote for the candidate you like the best, who's in line with what you want for the country. And then in the second round, if they make it great, vote for them again. If not, you pick your next best choice. And this also allows for political strategies where smaller candidates and their ideas who are eliminated in the first round can then weigh in on who they think is the best choice, um, you know, out of the policies of the remaining candidates. So then how does this shape up in practice? Well, consider that during the 2012 presidential election in France, the two major candidates um, of the two major parties in France only received a total of 56% of the recorded votes total with the rest being spread out among the other eight candidates. In the US in 2012, 98% of the votes went to the two major candidates and only 2% was spread among the two other candidates. Uh, yeah, I think there were two other candidates at that time. So basically, in order to attract voters for smaller candidates, the major ones can try to modify their policies. So, you know, in France, if there was a Green Party candidate who had a good showing in the first round, obviously it didn't get 50% or they would have won. If they had a good showing, the two remaining candidates might strategize and then say, hmm, in the second round, I'm going to enhance my green policies, you know, to kind of pull the voters from that first round toward them. So there's a bit of a different strategy in France, but that's all I'll say about that. Um, okay, the next thing is that on airtime on major media networks is not balanced in the USA. And that could be confusing for French people because here the rules of media coverage for a presidential campaign are very strict um, with two different phases. So phase one is before the official campaign and that starts uh, two weeks before the first round of the election. All media coverage is managed. So that means that the airtime allowed on national TV and also radio for each candidate must be in accordance with their position in the polls. So if you only represent 10% of the votes, your airtime must be around 10% of the total of all the candidates. Then phase two, from the beginning of the official campaign, it's the principle of equality. So all the candidates in the first round, no matter how small, are allowed the exact same time on national TV and radio. And people are actually paid by an independent institution to tally the airtime of each candidate uh, and make sure that they all get the same number of minutes. And that's why in France, you would never see only two candidates at a presidential debate uh, before the first round, because it just doesn't work that way. And French people that I've spoken with tend to find it unfair, almost undemocratic, that in the US, the presidential debate only shows two candidates. Also, political TV commercials are strictly forbidden in France. 
Although there are official TV campaign clips that are usually standardized video clips with strict rules of content and presentation. With strict rules of content and presentation where you can talk about your plan, your program, your ideas, but you cannot directly criticize another candidate. So those are clips broadcast uh, on TV, one after the other on public channels, um, and even the order of appearance is set by a random draw. So personally, I think that's a good thing and that paid commercials trashing an opponent are forbidden here. And that way you don't get nasty clips about candidates, which sometimes focus more on destroying the other candidate instead of keeping a positive spin and explaining your policies and what you can do for a country. So in France, rich candidates can't buy TV time. It doesn't work like that. Political campaigns here tend to be less nasty and less personal than they are in the USA. Okay, next up, number three, in the USA, you can vote early, and this stands in sharp contrast to the French system, where there is no early voting. Okay, so French people obviously understand the benefits to early voting and why people do that, but there are questions that come up when discussing this with French people. So they wonder, okay, voting early means you can vote for a candidate without having the full picture. Like, for example, what if a candidate you pick uh, and vote for early does something after you vote that would make you change your mind. Oh, well, too late. And also, how is it managed logistically? French people think, huh, it probably creates more of a logistic nightmare and security problems, you know? How do you, how do you get the count with election day and then mix them and make sure it's all up to snuff? And then also, does that vote count if someone votes early and then dies before election day? These are just a few questions that I heard. Um, so in France, you can only vote on election day, which is actually a Sunday. Uh, kind of funny, right? French people do do things on Sunday sometimes. Um, and if you live abroad, you can vote at the embassy or the consulate. And then something which is interesting is if you can't go to the polling place on that Sunday, on that election day, or for whatever reason you're unable to vote, maybe you're disabled, you're sick, you're on vacation, you can proxy vote. And in this case, someone is going to vote for you according to your instructions. So it's a bit of a risk because you really need to trust that person and um, since he or she is free to vote for whomever they'd like, but the option is there so you can still vote. So if you have a proxy in France, make sure it's someone that you trust. All right, next up, number four, French people were confused about why Americans vote on a Tuesday. It's not convenient at all for people who work or people who have other commitments during the week. So it's definitely one factor why some people don't vote in the US and it actually lowers voter turnout. Um, also in France, the, the ballot, the tickets are much simpler. In France, you only vote for one election at a time. So that means for the next presidential election, the only thing you vote for is who you want for president. You don't choose uh, who you want in your county, your municipal election representatives, um, if judges should stay uh, in office, um, state legislation, if you want medical marijuana, homestead laws, all the stuff you find on an American presidential ballot doesn't exist in France. In France, the, the ballots are actually sheets of paper that have candidates' names printed on them, and that's it. Nothing technical, no long-winded questions in tiny print. And that's another thing. In France, they use paper ballots, like literally sheets of paper with the candidate's name, not voting machines. So in France, you go to the polling place, and there are many. Um, and then on the table, you'll find piles of paper. Uh, with all the candidates. So you'll have like, if there are eight candidates, eight sheets of paper, and then you take all the papers and an envelope into your voting booth privately. You put the paper with the candidate who you're voting for into your envelope, close it, seal it, all very um, private. And then you come out and you drop your envelope uh, with that one piece of paper into the box. And before doing this, of course, they, they check your ID, your voting card, uh, you sign your name on our register, and then you're done. Easy peasy. Okay, next up, the French don't really understand the point of the Electoral College, and many Americans are actually against it as well, or just think maybe there's a better way. So in the US, it's definitely possible to lose the popular vote and still win the presidential ele election. I think it's happened five times in history, several in my lifetime. Uh, it dates back to the 1824 election, and it just happened in the last election. Um, in France, that's not the case. Every vote counts, period. And it's really mind-boggling to a lot of French people just to understand how a president could be voted into office even if he or she was not the person who received the most popular votes. All right, miscellaneous things to note. In France, you can be a candidate for the presidential election starting at age 18. In the U.S., you have to be 35. 
Um, in France, first and second rounds of the election are just two weeks apart, so you need sponsorship of 500 elected officials such as mayors, representative senators, um, to officially register as a political candidate. Um, and there's no VP in France, there's no vice president. You only vote for one candidate's name on that ballot, on that piece of paper. Um, also, financing in any way by companies is forbidden, so super PACs, not a thing in France. And then also, about 50% of the cost of the campaign is reimbursed by the state if you don't exceed the spending ceiling, which is somewhere um, in the ballpark of 20 million euros. And then the campaign counts, they're strictly monitored. Um, also, candidates need to show a declaration of assets, so there are no secrets there. So just a few miscellaneous facts. Also, finally, I'm not here to tell you who to vote for. I just hope and wish that you'll do it, that you will vote in the American election if you're able to. Um, and also, for anyone wondering, uh, I am not a French citizen. Although I live in France, I'm a permanent resident, the equivalent of a U.S. green card, and I do not have the right to vote here. But I did vote absentee ballot uh, for the U.S. presidential election, and that's something that, again, I encourage um, everyone who lives abroad and if you live at home to do. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, just a quick look at what the French find strange about the American election process. So if you enjoy this type of content in my channel, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, it really does help support me. And uh, I hope to see you right back here on We in France soon. Salut!